Good morning, it's Tim Pomake, and I am here with another Fredericksburg Strong podcast. Today we're interviewing one of the team members at Pomake and Nissan and Pomake Hyundai. I have with me Maggie Steckler. How are you doing, Maggie? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. So, obviously, the first question everyone's going to wonder, since I didn't announce what you do, are, you know, technician, salesperson, accounting, I mean, really, technician, is that, what do you do? Yes. You're a technician here. I am. So that's a fir- first, I think that's going to shock a little bit of people because you're how tall? I'm 4'10". 4'10", and you work on cars. Yes, sir. So let's talk about that. You know, you're 4'10", cars are about four feet. <laughs> how are you, you know, how does that work for you? Um, I struggle a little bit more than others, but I'm pretty careful about what I do. So how do you, I mean, how do you overcome it? I mean, you know, if you're getting inside the engine and you're digging in there, I mean, are you laying on top of it in there? I mean, how do you, how are you doing that? Well, it depends what I'm doing. Sometimes I have to get on top of the trucks to put the oil back in them. Um, different tools. Sometimes I go and ask for help. So you, you say you ask for help. So the, I assume that the rest of the team is pretty helpful then. Yes, they are. So they give you, do they, how much ribbon do they give you? They must give you a little bit. A lot. A lot. And you, <laughs> I'm, I, I've heard, and I'm just going to say, you you know how to hold your own with each and every one of those guys. Of course. So who, who gives you the most grief back there? Probably Tommy. Okay. Now, Tommy, Tommy gives you grief about you being tall. Because, I mean, Tommy isn't that much taller than you are to begin with. Well, he's been doing this longer than I have, and he can do everything, and I'm still struggling. <laughs> Well, I mean, keep in mind, I'm the one that got Tommy's little bench, so to help <laughs> and him I'm out. using it. And you're using it. So 410, you know, uh, and what people don't realize is that, you know, when I walk through the shop, I can see tires just walking, <laughs> it's like tires walking across, and, and it's you. I mean, so there's there's nothing you don't do. I mean, you're, you're first in on, on picking up tires, you know, the heavy jobs, the light jobs, you know. So it's not, so, you know, when people think of a technician... It's not some big burly dude out there, right? Not all the time. So what skills do you bring to being a technician that you think help because you're not that big, powerful person having to move those wrenches and things? Well, some of the harder things, not really harder, but sometimes light bulbs, they're tucked away in these smaller places and I can get my arms down in there and just pull them right out. And other people can't do that. They have to tear apart more stuff to just get to it. So getting inside, you know, electrical items, things like that, being a little bit smaller def- definitely has its advantages. Oh yeah, they plan on sending me to um, school for the electrical stuff. So you mentioned schooling. Uh, what was your first job doing this? I mean, how did you get started in the car business? So the way I got started, I went to Jamana and they have an automotive program. I did that for two years, got a job working at Firestone, and I was there for about a year before I came here. Okay. So what led you to go, so you had, let's go back to this, you had training at Germana. Yes. So what did you learn in school? I mean, because that's important for a lot of people who are leaving high school and whatnot. You went to higher education. Mm -hmm. What did you learn at Germana? So their automotive program, it covers the basics of a lot of different things, like you've got electrical brakes, engine, suspension, and so forth. So it gives you a good basis on what you're learning. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just good. So you went there, then you go to Firestone. So what surprised you from that difference from working in the classroom environment to working in the business environment? What was the difference there? The difference was I wasn't using what I was learning. Okay. What do you mean? So... You know, starting out, you're not going to be doing the bigger jobs that you're learning about. You're starting out doing the oil changes, the rotates, the fluid exchanges, and it's hard to remember all that stuff. Well, it has to happen with repetition, right? Mm -hmm. So you left Firestone and you came here. Mm -hmm. So when when you go from an independent or a chain like that and you go to a dealership, what led you to that change? I realized I wasn't going, I wasn't improving on what my abilities were. So I knew I needed to get out. I needed to just change where I was. And coming here has helped me so much. And it's, not to put words in your mouth, but is it because of the amount of training that can happen? 
when you look at the manufacturer's training and you're looking at all the all the items that are being done, does that help? It does. Okay. So let's go back a little bit. I know what the first thing that you wanted to do was. What was the second thing? I'm going to come back to that first thing in a second. Okay. I wanted to work on diesels. Okay. So you wanted to go h hardcore. Mm-hmm. So talk about that. So my dad was a truck driver from when I was really young, and he stopped doing it, I think, when I was in elementary school. But he would always go back and work for a neighbor down the street every once in a while. I just thought that was the coolest thing. I loved hearing the jig brakes just go by my house. And that made me want to work on them. Okay, so it sounds like being a technician or working on cars is something you got because of family. Mm-hmm. Now, that's kind of exciting. Now, um, is there any other family member in the car industry or doing anything like that other than your dad? No, not growing up. Not growing up? Okay. Well, I want to share something funny with you. So I know that the very first thing that you said you wanted to do was work with horses. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. So you, you wanted to work with horses. Why aren't you working with horses? Because I'm highly allergic. So it's a labor of love. You love riding horses. Yes. But sneezing is bad. Very bad. And it affects my asthma. Okay, so you have asthma on top of it. Mm -hmm. So how, I mean, okay, so we all have those things that we love and, you know, we know they're bad for us. Yeah. So you know, what struggle did you go through? How long did it take you to realize, okay, I can't do this? I mean, you know, what, what led you to finally, finally say, okay, I love it, but... Well, growing up, I would just ride once a week at my trainer's house. You know, medicine, I'm good. If I'm having problems, inhaler, I finish my hour of riding, I go home. And it was between the ages of 17 and 18, we brought my horse home, because I live on a small farm. And just trying to go down there every day and trying to take medicine every day, it, it was just stacking on top of its stuff. Mm. Stacking yeah. on top of it. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, when you start adding, you know, if, if you're taking medicine every day, yeah, you start, eventually you start going, okay, wait a second. Now I'm, I mean, I'm pounding the, all the inhaler, I'm pounding this, I'm pounding that. So do you still ride? I don't. You don't. I really want to, though. You really want So, well, yeah, I, I can make sense. Well, I want to share with you something that's funny. So, I don't know if you know this, but back in 1919, that's when we were founded, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, prior to that, my great-grandfather, who founded the company, he was actually a jockey. No way. He, yeah. So, he, he was riding horses at the turn of the century in New York, and it was a big deal, and, you know, they were, you know... It, jockeys were famous and, and he did real well well it, it appears unlike you who was able to keep weight and stay <laughs> in that in that realm he didn't and eventually he couldn't make weight so that's how he started in the, in the car business but even more interesting is he became a technician that's cool so that's how he started so uh and that's what kept us going through all the through all the years when you look at the great depression and things like that it wasn't a sales department that kept us going it was a service department and it's because of his time as a technician so I'd be you know from our standpoint you know we had, we can understand your love for horses but we're glad you ended up in the, in the car business so you mentioned back there that you know you're working with the guys uh, when you're out and about and you're talking to other people and you tell them what you do what's the reaction they're pretty surprised because they, they can't quite imagine how I do the stuff that I do. I, I can imagine they're surprised <laughs> because I imagine the same thing. Uh, I, I have a funny story, and, I, and I, I don't want to embarrass you when I say this, but it was one of the funnier things I've seen. If you don't know, Maggie really doesn't want help. If she asks for help, it's because she really needs help. But I remember watching you trying to move a brake. And, I, and it had been raining, and there was some water on the ground, and you went to turn the brake, and you turned yourself. So instead of that, <laughs> that you went like that, and then I saw you, you kind of did that look like, oh, I need some help. <laughs> so, which is a great thing. I mean, you know, and the thing that everyone says about you, and I want you to know this, nobody around here says they have a bad day when you're around, because you just seem to just make them all smile. So how do you keep a positive attitude when you're back there? I just enjoy working with the people. 
It makes a difference, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So when you're working back there with the guys, you know, and again, it is the guys. There's not many women back there. Why is that? You know, what make you know, what would a woman get out of this career? I mean, would you recommend it for other women? I would. Okay. What What about being a woman is something that makes it a good career? Well, for one, we our brains are different. We have a different thought process. So if there's something that someone else is having difficulties with, we might look at it differently and come up with a different solution. So it, it really is about being part of a team. It is. And, and do you feel that way with those guys back there? Yes. I, and you know, the thanks thing is that they get that what they say about you is amazing. So that's that's nice. So Thank you. let's go past just the career. Uh, besides women in this in this business, obviously women have concerns about bringing their vehicles in. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you had a chance to speak to any of our customers? I have. Every once in a while, when I pull up a vehicle myself, the customer will be standing there waiting, and they're always shocked to see that it's a woman stepping out of the vehicle and they'll just start talking to me and we just start discussing the car and my career basically so you know, when you look at being putting people at ease you know it's not just a, it's not a man's world it's it's a person's world it's everybody's and you know you're back there and it's you know, anyone can ask questions right mm -hmm. so which is which is I think important and you have no problem answering questions for anyone you've already proven that since you're sitting here answering with me yes sir so let's go into something else. Not only are you a team member here, not only do you work in the car business, but you're a mother. I am. So you have one child? I have one. Okay, age? He'll be four in May. So talk about your day. You know, how do you, how do you budget being a mom and being in the car industry? It's, right now he's too young to be in school, so it's about figuring out who's going to watch him during the day and each day of the week is someone different so it's 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 a family event as well or a team team work takes there. a village it does take a village which is which is which is important i mean it really is now your son yes okay so four years old uh does he have his own set of tools <laughs> he's got a little play set outside he does okay. he does which is good. And you, you give him some tips right now? None. Just stop touching that. Stop. <laughs> don't touch that. Don't do that. We all do that with our children. We spend a lot of time with that. Um, how long? Do, is, this your, is this your forever career? I think so. Well, I'm excited about that. I mean, you know, you do bring a lot of fun. Um, you know, I will tell you one of the things that we, they first told me that you did, I had to look up. And I'm going to tell you this. You told everyone that you were going to go to Cal Bingo? Cal Patty Bingo. Okay. I looked it up. Talk about Cal <laughs> Patty Bingo. So Cal Patty Bingo basically functions, we'll use it as a fundraiser. And you get a square, fenced off obviously, and you, um, you spray paint lines across it. Tiny squares in the middle. And basically you put the cow in there and, oh... Every box gets a number, and okay. basically you, people pay to have a number. So it's like a football pool. I don't know what that is. Like if, like you're guessing at football, everyone picks a box. So okay, so everyone, everyone's got a box. Yes. So let the cow go, and wherever the cow decides to poop, that number wins a prize. So how long does it take? I mean, you know, could you be there? I mean, that that could be a long day. To, I mean, it, it can be. So is it a it's it's a it's like a, rela a family kind of hang around and enjoy time with each other while you're waiting. Yeah, um, sometimes it's been as long as two hours. Sometimes it's like five minutes after the cow gets off the trailer. Okay, so and, and now you say it's a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. So who do, who's the fun, who's the funds? Who, who, who what's it normally for? Well, previously, um, you know, high schools will do this. Okay. Like, the marching band will put on a fundraiser. Who else? When the day... I'll, t I'll tell you what, I mean... Yeah, I don't know who does it, because it still sounds fun. I mean, I, I don't know why I'm... I think it's fun. It sounds <laughs> fun to me. But, I mean, it's a different thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was one of our first memories, by the way. When they told me that, I go... And I looked it up, I go, I gotta see what this is. And it, <laughs> it's a thing, so... 
Um, next time we do that, we, we have to, we, we all have to get involved with that because that, that sounds like a little, I mean, I could sit there, I mean, you, you sit there and the cow's walking around and people sit on the outside and go, hey, come here, come here, come here. Pretty I mean, much. So everyone's trying to, so if you have a center square, that's usually not a good thing. Um, center squares and right on the edge because the cow's tail isn't normally just at the edge. Oh, so you, oh, so there's not like a buffer zone of like a, no, like it's a pass just, line. There's no. A, so it's always on the edge. Now, are they really big squares, or we're talking like little tiny squares? It it depends on how big the opening is. I think the last time this was put on, the squares were ten by ten. So I'm gonna ask a stupid question because I have never been there and I don't know. And okay. The only thing I know about cow patties is they I've smell. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is what if the cow decides to move in the middle of one and it's on two? Does two people win? So at that point, they toss a coin. Re okay, so if it's on four, they got to toss it between four people. Most of the time that doesn't happen, Most but yes. Time, but, uh, but yeah, I can see someone pulling the rules out and go, hey, wait, what's going on? Now, will they have multiple sessions? Like if the cow does it in five minutes, it's like, okay, game over, we all go home, or they go, okay, we'll do another round? Usually this cow patty bingo is done during some other function that's going on. Can I say names? Sure. Can I say? Okay, so Spotsy High. Okay. The marching band did it as a fundraiser while a football game was going on. Really? Yes. Okay, so they do it on the football field. No, we did it on a field just outside. I mean, you know what? I I think it sounds fun. I think anything that we're out there doing that's different, that raises money, that gets people together, I think that sounds really exciting. It, it, and it's, it does say a lot about what people do. Uh, I've been really excited about talking to you. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good time. I did. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This is Tim Poenka again. I was here with Maggie from Poenka. Uh, with another one of our Fredericksburg Strong episodes. Everybody out there, hopefully stay safe. Uh, we look forward to having you back here at the dealership. Uh, have a good day.